per usual. Let's start with clarifications corner. My spatial invasion algorithm was clearly inefficient in many ways. So I think I'd like to go back and optimize it a bit. Uh, the biggest, the biggest optimization I can do is probably the fact that I do not need to actually go up this far and I don't need to meet them from the side as I, as I was doing. Right, so this, this was my original idea. I would meet them. Eh, can't even. This, this control scheme is very frustrating. Right, and I was trying to get them from the side. This is not necessary. And instead, it's enough to just walk up to here. And then, well, actually, it's an interesting question. What happens with the box? Let's chill, chill, chill. I still see a crate. What if I shoot now? I shoot the crate. That's not cool. Well, then I can just remove the crate. So shoot the crate, walk up. And now I don't need to do anything except chill right here and just shoot them. Right. And then I wait. Again, I chill and I shoot them. I wait again and I shoot them. Uh, this was, to be honest, this really was, trust me, my original idea, the first time I looked at it. But somehow I just decided that it wouldn't work. Mostly because, uh, for some reason, I thought I would want to stand over here. And shoot them kind of like so. But of course, this doesn't get them all. Right? This only gets the corner guy. Uh, and... Next time they come around, I'm going to be dead. And in fact, none of this works. <laughs> uh, yeah, and also, for some reason, my brain decided that they do a double down, right? They go down on the right side right now. And they will also go down on the left side. And if I were to just stand in place and not turn around and not prepare for them, they would somehow catch me from the side. But of course, that is not the case. So, I will probably go ahead and implement this more efficient. I mean, it's more assembly efficient, but it's not actually... Uh, no, it's more program size efficient, but it's not faster than an alternative I have, which is also an improvement over my algorithm. So. He, he, let's let's let me also explain the alternative to this which I also somehow didn't realize so let's try my original strategy where I go all the way up and then I prepare to meet them uh, if you remember uh, at this point I decided that it would be too difficult to turn right wait for them kill and then I'd have to turn left. And I decided this would be too difficult to implement. But of course, uh, this is pretty much the definition of clock arithmetic. And in order to turn right or left, I it is enough to do two turns. Because really what I'm doing is I'm turning 180 degrees. And I have a 90 degree turn left, I have a 90 degree turn right, and it doesn't matter which side I turn to. So. It really is enough for me to just, um, let's reset again. I walk up, I turn left once, I kill them all. And then I do, for example, right, right. I wait, I kill them all. And then I can just do right, right again. And this is gonna be a slightly more, slightly faster way to deal with the rats IRL, right? This is a more eager robot. Uh, it it goes closer to them initially instead of instead of stopping here and waiting for well actually maybe this is not even more efficient at all is it I thought it would be but actually it doesn't matter whether I am in line with them or I am below them 
Yeah, this is exactly... These are exactly the same thing. So... Yeah. I'm gonna go with the... Uh, walk... And shoot from here. So, I'll just... I'll just implement that. And I'll be right back. Done. It's pretty simple. So, I just reduce the number of steps. I step... Uh, well, I first I add a pew to the very beginning. So I pew, remove the box, then I walk all the way up to them. And then we use the exact same rat search. This is unchanged, so I literally just chill until, until I see a rat. And then we can just do four pews in the same way as before. Except now, I don't need to walk down, I don't need to turn, I just restart, I just wait again. And that's how this goes. So, this is done. Um, there's more, there's more to this. Uh, there's actually a somewhat significant improvement to the size of the program, which nobody pointed out for some reason. But, of course, uh, once I have stepped now once, I do not need to reload step, right? My now tells me to output my uh, register A, and I already have step loaded in register A, and it's not going anywhere, right? So it's actually enough to do step now, 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 now. Just repeat the step. So I don't know how to format it. I could do something like like this, I guess. Uh, so this should work as well. Yep. So we have reduced our assembly program by one, two, three, four instructions. Um, and one more thing, real quick. Uh, another suggestion. Just as I'm using now on the same line as pew, or on the same line as step, it's actually a good idea to do a jump on the same line as my label to which I jump. So loop, jump, red search, jump. Uh, this is just cosmetics, but I do agree that this is better. I, the reason I wasn't doing it is because I, until I tried this now thing, I didn't even realize it was possible. I already got used to the multi-line loop. Uh, but that's... I think that's it. I felt like I had more to say about this one, but I cannot come up with anything else. So I guess we're moving on to the maze. The fabled maze. If you solve it, you win the competition. And I do not get eaten. Woohoo! Write an algorithm that gets the robot from the start to the exit. This level is hard, you probably want to write down this. Well, I I will, you cannot stop me. Probably want to write down the pseudocode for your algorithm before you implement it. Use this hint if you get stuck, I'll try not to. Remember, you can't use immediate values larger than 63. A common mistake is to try to jump to a label further down than the 63rd byte. Oh no. Oh goodness me. Sounds like we're writing a huge program. Which will have labels past byte 63. Wow. That's no joke. Okay, so this is the maze. And we are in it, and we can walk around. I can see there's eight tests. That's a coin, by the way. What? Five coins. When did I get five coins? Oh, that's probably because, yeah, I actually... I actually already tried just running around in this maze uh, after the, the previous video. I was just curious how it would work. Uh, but I keep accumulating coins, it seems. They're not reset, but I, I can't use them for anything. Seven coins, eight coins. 
So the maze, the first test doesn't change, but I expect there to be eight different mazes to solve, to be solved. And so, yeah, I'm pretty sure I will have to, even if I, even if I want to cheat, I will have to implement an actual maze solving algorithm. Okay, we're very, we're very limited in what we can actually implement because we have very little RAM. I could add, I actually have some RAM. I could add RAM, RAM to my computer, but uh, I was told not to touch the architecture of this one, so I probably won't. But yeah, I'm pretty sure two registers is not going to be enough to save any kind of useful st state. Well, any kind of major global state. Maybe some kind of robot currently looking up, robot currently looking down might be savable. But basically, I expect to need to implement an algorithm that will just... Um, what do you call it? Stateless. Your... Like, any robot's action will be a pure function on the set of its current inputs. So the robot sh probably will not remember anything about what's already explored or where it is in the maze or anything like that. We're not gonna build a graph of this maze because we don't have the memory to save it. So the first thing that obviously comes to mind, I think it's a pretty common well, pretty common knowledge is how about we use the right or left hand rule? How difficult would that be implement? Or would that be to to? Yes, I cannot speak. How difficult would that be to implement in assembly? I wonder. And also, of course, in order to be sure that we can solve the maze, this one we can. We, this one can definitely be solved using left, left, right hand rule. Uh, but there, there are labyrinths that are not solvable using this kind of rule, and that's a labyrinth with disconnected walls. So if we have a wall that's not connected to the outer wall of the labyrinth. Uh, the right-hand algorithm will never explore it. But it looks like this one is fine, so I'm hoping it can work. How about I exit? Oh, come on. I want to see another... I want to see another, another labyrinth. Oh well. Oh well. Okay, so let's start thinking about how a left hand or right hand. Let's let's do left hand. I don't know, just because. Just because left. I think I think it shouldn't really matter. I, I think I should be able to pretty easily adapt my algorithm to left or right hand by just changing a variable or something. So how how is that going to work? I I need to be hugging a wall. Although here I'm always hugging a wall. And let's see, I go forward, I check I'm still hugging a wall. No, I don't think that's that's going to be too complicated. I don't think checking the wall is going to be useful. Okay, here I turn left. Now I have nothing to find. Uh, somehow I turn around in there. Let's not think about that for too long. And I turn... Notice how... Exiting from here, I think... Yeah, I also turned left. And now I'm hugging the left wall. And... I don't turn right, I turn left. Again. 
I don't turn right, I turn left. And again, I turn left. Wait, uh, that was not the left turn, was it? I'm confused. Yeah, no, no, no. I turn, I turn left here. I turn left here. Yeah, so it looks like I'm constantly turning, turning left. At all, at all times, except I did notice at the very beginning there was a right turn. This is right. But I am, for example, I am prioritizing a left turn over going straight, right? So over here, I can go straight, but I am prioritizing a left turn. So yeah, this is actually, this is the perfect, the perfect solution, the perfect situation. I have, I have all cases in which I can go, all directions. I can go up, down, left, right. Uh, but I prioritize left. If left wasn't an option, I would be going. So yeah, imagine I'm going, imagine I keep a state of where I was going, of where the robot is facing. Uh, this is still pretty weak, but uh, that's an idea. Um, so imagine I was going straight here. And my priority is to go left. If it's impossible to go left, then I go straight. If it's impossible to go straight, I go right. And then if it's impossible to go right, then I go back. Does this sound good? So I need to exhaust all options. So try left. Now try turning left. Try going straight. Try turning right. And backtrack. Forward. Um, yeah, so try turning left, impossible. Try straight, possible. Try left, possible. Try left, impossible. Try straight, possible. Left, right. Okay, okay. I think I think this is a pretty simple algorithm which I can implement in assembly. Uh, the question is, well, first of all, does it really work? I'm not 100% certain this is correct. And second, is this second is this the optimal way to go about solving this. Are there other options? I am not aware of maze solving algorithms other than this one that do not maintain some kind of state. Right, either there's algorithms that literally just build a graph of everywhere you've gone, but that is definitely beyond our capabilities. There's algorithms that kind of put things at intersections in uh, the labyrinth. You, you save stuff at an intersection, but just based on what I'm currently seeing, I don't think... Maybe, maybe it is possible to do better than... Hugging aside, but I'm not aware of such algorithms. Now that's a question. Do I go and try to look up a better algorithm? Or do I go with what I already came up with? I mean, I think it's going to be in the spirit of the game to just go with what I have, what I can do, and implement that. And then maybe in the next verifications corner, I can try a cool, super powerful, mega efficient algorithm from the internet. By which I don't mean, I don't mean actually looking up the solution for this in game, in assembly, rather just the general idea of an algorithm that is stateless or almost stateless and trying to implement it in assembly myself. Okay, so 
I think I'm gonna settle for left hand turns or hugging aside. So let's try to start writing pseudocode. Hmm. I have my old solutions here. Okay, let's see here. Um, right, I'm gonna be jumping around a lot, but one more thing I wanted to do. Uh, this has been on my mind for a while now, and for some reason I haven't done it still. But in assembly, of course, we only have this jump instruction, right? We can jump to... I can jump to labels. Right? Uh, but generally in modern programming, this jump to instruction uh, probably shouldn't exist at all. And if it does exist, it's usually considered bad style. And instead we use other commonly... Um, what's the word? Accepted? Whatever primitives or loop things, such as while we have or we have uh, other things for control flow. We have if we have stuff like case. Uh, what else? We do have repeat until sometimes, uh, and this is actually repeat until is the most basic thing we can implement with labels. Uh, but again, I'm jumping ahead of myself. My idea was to try to implement these things generically using jumps. So, for example, we already know, uh, and I've, I've run into this a bunch of times now, that repeat until is the most basic thing. Repeat, repeat until is going to be just... Uh, uh, well, repeat... Let's say repeat x until... Or repeat, whatever, x. Uh, it will be just label until, or repeat, and we'll have x inside, and we'll have repeat, and then we have jump condition. Uh, let's say until condition. Right, this is, this is it. Label loop. I don't know. I need label rep. Just so it's a bit clearer to read. Right? This is repeat implemented in terms of jumps. Now while, I think, is going to be more complicated than a repeat. Uh, because we need to have a way of skipping the first iteration. Right, and basically we need to perform our check before the operation. So let's see. Inside of the while we do x, we have a label. Well, yeah, necessarily, pretty much necessarily, we will have a repeat inside of the while. So we'll have label. Uh, I call it iter or something. I don't know. And then iter we jump but this is an unconditional jump we will keep doing this i think for the while so while cond x something along these lines we will keep doing this unconditionally but at the very start uh actually after here we will need to do another jump we need to test our condition right and with this guy, we will jump to some label, let's call it done. And this is going to be outside our loop. So label done. Is this right? Is this what a while would compile to in assembly? Yeah, if the condition doesn't hold, actually... I mean, jump not cond, kind of. Yeah, I've, I've uh, 
jump. Not condition, right? I wonder if... If, if not conditioned, right? If not conditioned, we're done. Otherwise, keep doing X. Trying every time. Testing. Testing it every time. Uh, I wonder if this can be implemented without the knot. Nah, I don't think so. And besides, uh, considering my jump is a single instruction regardless of the knot, right? If I'm testing for zero or if I'm testing for not zero, it is just a single instruction, so there's no problem with this. Uh, four. I mean, a four is just a while. Except we have an increment inside of it. Uh, and, of course, it depends on the language. Maybe a four can iterate a collection. But I don't think it's going to be... I don't think I, I need it. Uh, and if, however, I do. So let's say if cond then x else y something along those lines let's see so we will do x and we will do y at some point but we need but we need some set of jumps hmm so if condition then i do x else i do y how about i switch them around and I do jump condition, if my condition's an X, do X, it's gonna be my label, label do X, something along these lines. Uh, and then once I'm done doing X, I don't need to do anything. Otherwise, uh, if condition does not hold, I will do Y, and once I'm done doing Y, I need to ensure that I'm not gonna do X. So let's say uh, done jump condition or no done jump unconditional actually and this is going to be my label done right so I think I think this is my this is going to be my if and what even is a case? Nah, a case a case is too complex a, constru a construct. Because I cannot easily test equality on the overture architecture. I will need to do subtraction and Yeah, I can't be bothered. Just like with the four, I don't think I don't think this really matters. So yeah. Let's let's say we just have these three basic things. And just so that I don't have to re-implement them every time, I will be able to just copy this kind of construct to my program. Okay. Now let's get back to the problem at hand. Let's get back to our robot. Oops. So, we agreed that we want to... keep trying to turn left and implement implement an eager turn left algorithm how do i do this hmm okay well first thought uh I was a bit vague about the question of whether or not I need to keep track of robot facing direction. And actually, it looks like that, that won't be necessary because the robot literally exists in the physical world and it literally already has a physical direction, which I don't need to care about. I only care about uh, directions relative to the robot's current facing. so. Right now, I already know that it's facing left, uh, or whatever, wherever it's facing. And I only need to do conditional, or not, <laughs> not conditional, I only need to do relative. Uh, turn to the left, try going there, then I 
do look look right try going there then I look right try going there and then I look right again and I try going there so let's say I've done this yeah I look left and then I try looking right this doesn't this doesn't sound like that complicated an issue so let's see oh also another thing into here which just came to my mind perhaps I could implement not not exactly functions but subroutines could I not could I not could I push so I will need I will need some primitive equivalent of a call stack right um, so let's say let's say I have code 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 right whatever and then inside of here I want to perform a subroutine um, so let's say let's say I have my subroutine implemented somewhere else and let's call it label subroutine uh, what, what other there there's other names for this but for some reason I decided to go with subroutine uh, right and then there's code 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 inside of here and really the question is I need to jump back to where I jumped from right so here I can do jump to subroutine uh, or the other way around uh, but I will need a way to save my position and I will need a way to jump from here and this will be an, an actually unconditional jump so this is this can optionally be conditional well from here I will need an unconditional jump back to here which huh I can do it see I can do it once if I have one call to my subroutine, then I can just save this as label sub out, whatever, and I jump to sub out. But the problem is I will not be able to reuse sub out, right? If, if I have another call somewhere else and I have the same label, then I'll have duplicate labels. But if the labels are different, then I will need different jumps at the end of the subroutine. So this doesn't quite work. Which means that... Instead, I probably need to save... My... Uh, so... I can label this as something. Doesn't matter, this is just... Uh, this will be a number. But then I will want to actually load this number. So yep, yeah, this is this is all happening before I actually jump into the subroutine. This might be completely pointless, but I am curious. Wow, this video is gonna be super long. Sorry. Uh, it's just the fate of anyone watching it. <laughs> so once I have my back loaded, I can save it somewhere. Right, so I can do move back well, uh, from A to, let's say I'm going to save it into register F, just at the very end, at the very bottom of my register. Collection, right, this is going to be my back one. And then this guy will always know that it will need to jump back to F, to what's in F. So it will do move from F to A, and that will jump. So, yeah, something like this. And now I can, now I can call this my subroutine call. Except, no, I cannot. Uh, wait, is this even possible? Yeah, because I need the label to be defined below the subroutine, or, no, 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 wait, 
Yeah, I need the label to be defined below the subroutine, but I need the number to be used before it. Right, because I want to jump below the subroutine, I, I'm, I'm done executing it and I want to continue execution with the rest of the code. Hmm. Procedure is another word for it, right? Procedure. <laughs> Yeah, let's... I, I'm not sure if that's even allowed. It should be, right? Because, yeah, it must be allowed. Because label is just a quick way to refer to a line number. And I know a line number. So I can, I can do something like back. Then I can say label back. Um, let's do some code. Yeah, it looks it looks like it works, right? It knows what back is. Cool. Yeah, so this is going to be my subroutines. Subroutine. I don't know, this might be the wrong name to call this thing. It's just you don't hear it often, do you? Yeah. Like this. Let's put these together. Okay. Well, whatever. All right. So let's go back to the problem at hand again. Um, I was going to turn around. Why did I think of subroutines? I thought of subroutines. Because it seems like, look if it's possible to go, and then turn right, sounds like a subroutine, but I think I might be able to just do it in a, sim in a single loop. So, let's just write out, I think let's try to write out all the commands uh, by hand. So, let's say, right now we, let's restart. Uh, that's fine, it doesn't matter where we're facing at the start of the level. So the first thing we do is we do, we turn left, which for me is left now, right? And we try to go. So this try to go is an interesting... Wait, what happens if I just tell it to go? What happens if I tell the robot to go? when it's when it's facing a wall because that would be actually much easier than loading observations it would be easier to try going into the wall that would be an incredibly simple algorithm wow okay let's just check it real quick so let's reset and let's say first of all let's go back here Let's copy our saved stuff, like so. Let's copy it into here. This is going to be my library. I don't think it's a good idea to save uh, robot functions as actual assembly commands. I think it's better to reuse constants. Because uh, really, you would you would do import robot in here, right? So Import robot homo. Um, yeah, and do chill, do pew. I don't need for now. Let's just say we have a quick action for now, and let's immediately tell the robot to uh, step now. You see, it doesn't look broken. Okay, then let's try. Let's try left now. Step now. Wait, is it literally this simple? I do left now, step now. I do right now, step now. Then I do right again. 
step now. So with this, we tested turning left. With this, we tested to, uh, going forward. With this, we tested going to the right. And finally, right now, step now. There's no way this will work, surely. Forever J. Let's see. Step now. Uh, okay. The robot is broken. Uh, it looks like I'm turning in the wrong direction. Why? Step now. Okay, that's just me trying to go forward. So turn left. Step. Oh, I see. This is the problem, of course, of course. Uh, I need to reset my state if I was able to step, right? I need to know that I don't need to check anymore and that I need to restart my loop. So, yeah. Okay, okay, but that doesn't sound bad either. That, that doesn't sound bad, so... Let's see here. Heck, there's too many windows. Um, so, okay, we've done, we've turned left. We've turned left. Now, we observe. So, I don't know why I don't, despite, despite the suggestion to use pseudocode. I do not feel like there's much pseudocode to be written for this. And it's more the implementation rather than the idea. So let's say, let's see. Uh, first we turn left and we check, we need to check. So checking means move from in to, what is a wall? A wall is one and no wall, I want to, Want to move no wall is zero zero is nothing okay that's it's no problem so i will load this into register d right because my jump will happen based on d right jump if based on d um and Well, I can do, you know what I can do? No, I don't think so. I was thinking maybe I can always just step now eagerly. And then if I've managed to step, I can jump. Jump if. Uh, so I need to jump. I need to restart if I manage to step, which means I saw zero here, which means jump zero. So I, I jump back, I restart. Um, so this is no longer forever, this is more like go, something. A skill style. Um, but I'm not sure this will work. So let's see. I do, then I do, once I've turned left, I do right now. I need to observe again. If, well, if I, if I couldn't step, right? Well, yeah, it's kind of true. If, if, if it's impossible for me to step here, then this will do nothing. So it's probably okay. In to D. I turned, so now I'm facing forward. I, I try to step. If it was possible for me to step, then I go. Wait, this looks... This looks... This looks right, actually. Looks like this might work. So, I, t I do this once, I do this twice, I do this three times. Right? Left, forward, right, back. 
Okay. Let's see. Now reset. And let's let's see. Turn left. Observe. Forward. But the observation will be zero. So we know that we were able to step. So we should reset to label. We, we should go to label. Yep. We turn left. It looks like it works. Okay, important moment here. Are we going to turn right? Um, I, I think it went wrong. Did it? Did it? It's hugging the wall. It's hugging the wall. It's working. It's working. <laughs> it's working. It's a very inefficient solution, but I think it's working. Okay, you know what I want to do? Um, I want to make this even nicer. We're going to have a quick action const observe. Uh, which is going to be this. So left now, observe. Ah, goodness. You gotta love gymless editing. Okay, I think that's it. Let's see now. I do I do notice the 10 kilohertz button. It's working. Okay, let's send it off at an insane speed. Oh, <laughs> of course, I have now I have now done a full search of the labyrinth, but I also need to exit. Um, okay, mm, this this makes it much more difficult because I need to I need to test for door after every step. And I also need to test for door in all, in all directions. Oh no. Yeah, so just traversing the labyrinth is not enough. I need to exit. I need to apply action button on the door, I think. All right, back to the drawing board. How do I do this efficiently? I mean, this looks like a subroutine, does it not? Right now, left now, well, left now doesn't. But right does. Hmm. So, I need, do I, do I really need to check for door in all directions? Or, how about, how about, you know what, you know what, because I think, I think I can, just like I do a uh, pointless step, which leads me nowhere, I think I can also add a action now in front of every step. I will just try to open every wall. That might work, I think. Let's take a look here. Success! <laughs> and it's pretty efficient even. I'd say it's not bad. Congratulations! You won the competition! An amazing achievement! How is that elephant doing? The dude is smiling, by the way. If you choose to go on to the rest of the levels, I will teach you about RAM the stack and the function and function calls oh yes i am very much looking forward to learning about ram stack and function calls and you will get to solve more interesting challenges like this one but first you would have to build a better computer overture was a good as first was sorry overture was good as a first machine 
but it is clumsy and programs get very messy. To solve the challenges I have for you without pulling all of your hair out, you will need something more expressive, the leg architecture. On the other hand, you could also retire, be proud and enjoy your reward of not being eaten. Thank you. I have no intention of retiring. I have all intentions to proceed. But first, first, I want to optimize this. I am actually considering using a subroutine for this. Uh, and also, uh, I have, I, I often do left, right. Yeah, so my most common things are action and step. Uh, and I do no arithmetic, do I? Yeah, I never do any arithmetic by just being slightly wasteful with my actions, with my in-game time. I manage to have a thoughtless robot, which, which does not even care about its surroundings. It just does the same thing over and over again. Uh, although it kind of it kind of does, it cares about walls. Um, yeah, uh, but I I do have these one two three four registers uh, unused. Uh, so I will use them to cache my actions. And instead of loading them every time and doing them with now, I will have quick actions. So I will do this first and I'll be right back. All right, first part done. So I now cache step in C, right in E, action in F. I decided that left is going to be my least used command. I didn't give it that much thought, just it seems like because we do multiple rights and we only do one left in a loop, uh, even though left is first. I still think it's probably the least used command and I wanted to save a buffer for the next thing I'm going to do. And now instead of having two commands like action now, I will have a single command action now, step now. So this is that. And we have the exact same program, just slightly optimized. You can see it works. But now I am curious. And I do want to implement this as a subroutine. So, oh, I never named the program. This is gonna be, I'll call it B star and dot omul. This is our maze search algorithm. Uh, but I'll keep this, I think, because I expect to break the stuff. And it's gonna be B star sub whatever normal uh, and i want to remove these uh, and i want to put this outside i will call it label um this is kind of we we try going yeah, whatever. This is this is an attempt. It's a single attempt at going somewhere. Uh, I think I will keep the first left. Right. Yeah, I think I'll keep the first left attempt. I could just do this as a subroutine, uh, which really would be an attempt. Then I'd had left now subroutine, right now subroutine. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if this is even an improvement. Honestly, it doesn't really look like that much. But yeah, what I do is I label uh, op1 and I jump try. Try jump. And then I do this a million times. Label. Oh, yeah, except uh, 
what was it? I don't just... Yeah, I don't just label. I also need to save it to register. To register. Wow, no, this is, this is not worth it. Yeah, this is totally not worth it for a subroutine this small. Well, I already started. I might as well. Uh, but I don't think it's worth it. So, yeah, label pop1 is going to be after my attempt. Uh, but I need to do pop1 and I need to load it from A. And I think I left B unused. Yeah. To B. To B. And over here, I do to B. I save it. Wait. From B, I save to A, and I unconditionally jump back. Right? This is my subroutine. And then I have this repeated three times. Except pop 2, pop 2, pop 2, or pop 3. three. Okay. Something like this. Let's check if this even works. It works, but it looks slower. Yeah, because we're doing a lot more stuff unnecessarily. Yeah, this is not this is not good. This is not worth it. Okay, well, then this is my solution. I think I could do better in terms of game ticks. In terms of the number of game actions, if I didn't constantly try to action and try to step, right? Because I know whether I need an action and I know where whether I need a step, to, uh, depending on my observation. But this is an easier assembly, and I'm happy with it. So that's that. Let's look at it once again. It's broken. When did you break? Bastard. How did it... How did the... It literally worked just now. What? I have no idea what I did, but it started working again. Sweet. Collected all the coins. The maze is complete. The elephant is getting eaten. <laughs>